If you ever thought you might want to pick up a percussion instrument, this is a good tune to do it. If you're new to this congregation, it's initiation. It's on my end. <laughs> now, I'll even have the Rev play a little. Come on now. Oh. This is kind of a reggae thing. So that you, that you can almost do no wrong. Let's put it that way. Oh, you wouldn't do no wrong. Just don't play the cowbell, Jerry. We, no, that's, no. That's, you know, we, we've retired that. We've retired the cowbell, at least for a minute. <laughs> okay. Uh, and the one, the one line you want to know is, it grows love, it grows love, it grows love. That's the line we're uh, gunning for on this one. One, two, three. <laughs> tired from doing percussion, so there's no lesson today. I'm exhausted. I'm exhausted. For this lesson on the love of creation and the environment, I did some deep and heavy research. No, I didn't read scientific tomes about the environment or ecological treaties that remind us how creation 
is crying out for our attention, though plenty of those do exist. I didn't even refer to Pope Francis's Laudato Si, his encyclical about ecology and our need, everyone's need, to protect the environment from an interfaith perspective. No, my deep and heavy research, I went to another source for this lesson, a source most of us have heard of and very likely several of us have already read, Dr. Seuss's The Lorax. The Lorax was written in 1971, just after the Environmental Protection Act was passed, and is as pertinent today as it was then. 1971 seems like just a few decades ago compared to the more than a century of destruction of our ecological system that has happened since the industrial age. We have been pumping pollutants into our air, our water, and even into the very ground we walk on for decades now. And now we and future generations are paying the price. But back to the Lorax. If you don't know it, I'll condense and recount the story Dr. Zeus wrote a little over 50 years ago, though I won't attempt to repeat his wonderful rhymes, mostly. At the start, he describes a town where there are no trees or birds or fish. Why aren't there these natural plants and animals? Well, the onceler is the narrator who is describing to a young man what has happened. The young onceler is also the antagonist of the story, so his perspective is important. The onceler describes how the town used to be. The grass was green, the pond was wet, the clouds were still clean, and the song of the Swami Swans rang out. And most amazing of all, the most amazing were the truffle trees. These truffle trees grew tall and had bright colored tufts at their top. And the onceler tells us they grew mile after mile after mile. Animals played under them. Brown barbalutes frolicked in the shade of the truffle trees and ate of its fruit. And in the pond nearby, humming fish hummed while splashing about. But the trees were the main event. And the onceler, once he encountered them, was amazed. He had been searching for trees like this all his life, he says. So the onceler cut down a truffle tree and took that soft tuft that grew at the top of the tree and knitted a thneed. Now a thneed is a wonderfully multiple purpose garment and he knew that thneeds would sell. But before he could get around to selling it, out of the stump of the tree that had been chopped down came the Lorax, the main character of our story, the title character. The Lorax is a sort of prophet who speaks for the trees which have no voice of their own and he once cha he challenged the onceler about this need he had made and said, and, and the Lorax said, sir, you are crazy with greed. There is no one on earth who would buy that fool's need. Of course, the Lorax was wrong. The Thneed sold quickly, which inspired the Onceler to invite family members to come help him cut down truffula trees and make needs by the dozen. The Lorax remained adamant that he spoke for the trees which were being chopped down at an alarming rate. The Thneeds sold quickly and were very popular. As the truffle trees came down and their tufts knitted into these needs. The Lorax pointed out that the bar brown barbalutes who ate the fruit of the truffle trees no longer had enough to go around and said, and my poor barbalutes are getting all the crummies because they have gas and no food in their tummies. So off they go, off the, the barbalutes go to find food to survive. The onceler was unmoved. He said, I, the onceler, felt sad as I watched them all go, but business is business, and business must grow, regardless of crummies and tummies, you know. Next, the Lorax came to announce that the Swami swans had stopped singing because of the smog the onceler's factory produced, and off they went too. And the factory was polluting the pond with its leftover goo, and also drove away the humming fish. Soon the factory took down the last trophola tree, and there were no more. 
and thus there were no more needs to make or sell. And off went the factory worker so that, as the Wunstler states, now all that was left neath the bad smelling sky was my big empty factory, the Lorax and I. But the Lorax left also, but left behind a small pile of rocks that said, unless. The Wunstler tells the young boy he is relating this tale to that the significance of the unless is, quote, Unless someone like you cares a whole awful lot, nothing is going to get better. It's not. At that point, the onceler throws down the very last truffula tree seed to the boy and charges him to plant a new truffula tree and care for it. Grow a forest, protect it from axes that hack. Then the Lorax and all of his friends may come back. And that's how the story ends. We're left hanging about whether the boy plants a seed, if the truffle trees and all the other animals come back, if there's a happy ending, the end. And so we find ourselves in our own story, the Lorax now. Greed has indeed besmirched our environment and we are waiting to see if we can turn around the damage that's been done. Are there enough Greta Thornburgs the outspoken young Swedish and viral activist to make a difference? Will greed continue to win over concern for the ecological systems that are being befouled each and every day? Unfortunately, environmental concerns have become a political football. We all know that. We have climate change deniers on one side and they tend to ignore or disbelieve the scientific evidence that we're going down a path that will lead to the destruction of our planet or at least of the human race and perhaps of all living creatures. I think Dr. Seuss has it right. Greed is at the core of the crisis we're in now. And denial plays a big part too. The earth, the solar system, the universe are all indeed products of God's creation. And we're called, we are called to care for it and protect it. As a human race, we haven't done so good at doing that lately, but we must get better. I know it feels like we're insignificant up against gigantic oil companies, powerful car manufacturers, and other big industries that continue to ignore the warnings of impending disaster. What can we do, we may cry as we fling our hands into the air. It's true, turning off the water as you brush your teeth is not a big deal when it comes to conservation, for example but it is a step, and day after day, and a step that in concert with others doing the same thing may make a difference. We can also raise awareness and make sure we vote for politicians who understand the environmental mess we've created. God's creation is too valuable to ignore the dire state it is in. We can turn a blind eye or we can act in our own lives and promote solutions to the problems we face we can support activists like Thunberg and really care for our environment. We can love creation with all our being. We're being given that last truthful a tree seed. What will we do with it? And so it is. Amen. And so for our meditation, we're going to do a, a nature meditation, but one that's a little lighter than what I just talked about. So, so I invite you to just relax where you are. If you're comfortable, close your eyes. Take a deep breath. And as you exhale, release any cares and concerns you may be carrying. Imagine yourself walking on a path through a forest. The path is soft beneath your shoes, a mixture of soil, fallen leaves, pine needles, and moss. As you walk, your body relaxes and your mind clears more and more with each step you take. Breathe in the fresh mountain air, filling your lungs completely. Now exhale. Breathe out all of the air, feeling refreshed. 
Take another deep breath in, revitalizing. And breathe out completely, letting your body relax even further. Continue to breathe slowly and deeply as you walk through the forest and continue the forest visualization. The air is cool but comfortable. Sun filters through the trees, making a moving dappled pattern on the ground before you. Listen to the sounds of the forest. Birds singing. Gentle breeze blowing. The leaves on the trees shift and sway in the soft wind. Your body relaxes more and more as you walk. Continue to breathe deeply and slowly as you become more relaxed. As you walk through the forest visualization, feel your muscles relaxing and lengthening. As your arms swing in rhythm with your walking, they become loose, relaxed, and limp. Feel your back relaxing as your spine lengthens and the muscles relax. Feel the tension leaving your body as you admire the scenery around you. Your legs and lower body relax as well, feeling free and relaxed. As you continue to walk through the forest visualization, you begin to climb up a slight incline. You easily tread upon along smooth rocks on the path, feeling at one with nature. The breeze continues to blow through the treetops, but you are sheltered on the path and the air around you is calm. Small saplings grow at the sides of the path. Around you is an immense array of greens. Some of the leaves on the tree are a delicate light green. Some are deep, dark, true forest green. Many trees have needles that look very soft and very green. The forest floor is thick green moss. Tall trees grow on either side of the path. Picture the variety of trees around you. Some have smooth white bark. Others are darker with coarse, heavy bark, deeply grooved. Enjoy the colors of the bark on the trees, white, tan, brown, red, black, many combinations of colors. You admire the rough brown bark of pine trees and enjoy the fresh pine scent. Smell the forest around you, the air is fresh. It's filled with the scent of trees, soil, and mountain streams. You can hear the sound of water faintly in the distance, the gentle burbling sound of a creek. As you continue to walk through the forest, you are gaining elevation and getting closer to the sound of a running stream. As you near the top of a mountain, you hear the stream very close now path curves up ahead. You can see sunlight streaming onto the path. As you round the corner, you hear the water and see a clearing in the trees up ahead. A beautiful lookout point awaits. You are growing tired from your journey. Your body feels pleasantly tired and heavy. Imagine yourself walking toward the clearing in the stream. Stepping stones make an easy path across the stream and towards the edge of the mountain. Step on each large flat stone to easily cross the small shallow stream. And up ahead is a large smooth rock, like a chair waiting for you to rest. The rock is placed perfectly high up on this beautiful vantage point. 
Sit or lie down on the rock if you wish. It's very comfortable. You feel very comfortable and at ease. The sun shines down on you. Looking around, you see mountains in the distance, faint and blue. You can look down from your vantage point into a valley with trees and a brilliant blue lake. Across from you is another mountain. The clearing around you is made up of rocks, soil, pine needles, moss, and grass. The grass and mountain wildflowers around you blow gently in the breeze. A deer quietly emerges from the edge of the forest to graze in the clearing. As the deer raises its head to look at you, you can see its nostrils moving to catch your scent. Deer cautiously walks to the stream to drink before disappearing back into the forest. Squirrels dart in and out of sight as they romp through the trees and race across the clearing. Feel the sun warming your body as you relax on the rock. Enjoy the majestic landscape around you and feel your body relaxing even more. Your body becomes very warm and very heavy. Continue to breathe the fresh, clean air. You feel so relaxed, calm, at peace, in unity with nature around you. Enjoy the sights, sounds, and smells of the forest around you. Feel the sun warm on your skin. Feel the gentle breeze blow across your cheek. Listen to the birds singing. Hear the stream flowing, the leaves rustling in the breeze, squirrels chattering. See the flowers, trees, valley, and mountains around you. If you lay back on the comfortable rock, you can look up to see the blue sky. Small white clouds float gently across the sky. Watch them drift slowly by, shapes ever-changing. Enjoy this peaceful place. When you are ready to leave, slowly begin to reawaken your body. Know that you can return to this forest visualization in your imagination whenever you like. As you reawaken, keep with you the feeling of calm, peace, and relaxation. Wiggle your fingers and toes to wake up your muscles. Shrug your shoulders, stretch if you want to. And when you are ready, open your eyes and return to full wakefulness, feeling alert and refreshed. And so it is. Here at Unity Spiritual Center, we are an ocean of love. Here at Unity Spiritual Center, we have an inspiring vision, an exciting mission, and compelling values by which we strive to live. Each week, we will join together in saying one of our statements. Please join me with me in saying this week's statement, which is on the screen. Our mission is, we are a creative, joy-filled, spiritual community dedicated to healing, inspiring, and transforming the lives of all people through prayer, education, and love. And in this space, feeling so inspired by that mission and our vision and values also, and feeling so enriched by what we've experienced here today, let us take time now to be a channel for enrichment through our generous tithes and love offerings. As Michael shares another song, you are invited to support this congregation with a check made out to USC or cash or by making a donation online. If you are here in the sanctuary, our usher has already come forward to take your offering, and here she is. Practicing the principle of tithing ourselves as a spiritual community, we are pleased to tithe 10% of the offering collected every Sunday to various unity organizations and local nonprofits that serve our city. 
So let us take a moment now to bless our tithes and love offerings as we cup them in our hands or next to our hearts. Let us say our offering blessing, which is on your screen. Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. Thank you, God. So once again, if you feel like playing, this is a good one for that particular idea. Every moment is a blessing, every hour is divine. I'm grateful and I'm thankful for this life of mine. Love is found in every corner, beauty sails across the sky. Peace is flowing like a river, a gift for you and I. As I count my many blessings, all the things that God provides, never cease to wonder where all that love resides.